Thanks, Tom. Cheers, love. Thanks very much. Ta See you tomorrow. See you. Ta da. Mm, hey, uh, have they had their breakfast? The what? Oh, them three little sparrows that come every morning. Yes, I've just chucked my crust to them in the backyard. No, Len and Ray. Oh, them two sparrows, yes. yes. Well, I don't know for certain not living there like, but if it's any help to you, ma'am, Ray come in first thing this morning for 20 cigarettes. Cigarettes? Oh, them's no breakfast for working fellas. Perhaps they put milk on them. Hey, did he say out? Only something very brief, like, about the government. Oh, no, no, I mean, did he say out about me? About them wanting me? That time in the morning, ma'am, all they wanted was fags. Oh. Empty bellies and full ashtrays. <coughs> it's a shame. <coughs> well, listen, knowing how interested you are in the welfare... Oh, I am, Chuck. Right, next time I see one of them, I'm going to put a good word in for you. Oh, Tom, love, only I don't want to seem too pushing, you know. <laughs> Oh, Mrs. Tanner called in for a drink, have you? You never know, do you? Yeah, well, the ginger beer our kid sells is a bit stronger than the stuff they have at a certain pub not far from here. I should be very careful what you say, Hilda. After all, they only said there'd been a complaint, that's all. Oh, I know. Stan says you mustn't jump to conclusions. They all matter's abus corpus. Oh, come off it, ma'am. Accidents can happen. Yes, as the man said as he pushed his wife off the top of the Blackpool Tower. They are, you see. Mrs. Tanner doesn't think it were an accident. Here, here, don't you put words in my mouth. I'm not. Only it stands to common, doesn't it? If you want to make more out of a bottle of whiskey, you put water in it, don't you? And from all we hear, the alleged person is rather hard up. That's why she couldn't give me a rise. I'll take one of them small loaves, please, love. Yeah, she's hard up. Yeah, and I, I bet you know the true identity of Jack the Ripper and yeah, all. And according to Betty Turpin, you was looking a bit funny at your drink last night. And oh. You're an expert. Thank you and good morning. Hey, see how she skedaddled when I mentioned that? Makes you wonder if it wasn't her. What shot the alleged? I suppose... I suppose the next post will be midday. That's right. That's when you get a letter telling you that an uncle that you never knew you had has died and left you a gold mine in South Africa. I'm not in the mood, Billy. Oh, no news is good news. That's what I always say. And I always say, don't cross your bridges before you come to them. Ah, oh, cheer up, Mum. It might never happen. But it has happened. You know it's happened. Why? 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 Well, what gets me is the one that noticed the stuff was watered. Why did they report it to you instead of them? Watered? Who said it was watered? They didn't say it was watered. Why do you say it was watered? Oh, nobody said anything. There's just been a complaint. I've told you. They'll let you know when the analyst report comes in. Now... Come on, put your feet up and I'll make you a cup of tea. I don't want a cup of tea. Oh, come on, have a cup of tea. I want to know why Mrs Turpin said it was water. Because that's what they usually do. You think I did it? That's no, I it don't. Isn't. Honestly, cross my heart, Mrs Walker. It wasn't the little fairies. I suppose if they put a five-pound stamp on and post it locally, it should be here at noon. Yes, if the postman's not on strike and if the street lamps are on to show him where he's going. Oh, Billy. So, come on, sit down, stop worrying until we get the analyst report. 33 years. Yeah. I know. 33 years. I don't know what your dad would have said. I do. He'd have said, stop worrying, honey, love. It'll all sort itself out. That's exactly what he would have said. I read the LBA handbook in bed last night. I couldn't sleep. The maximum penalty is £100 or three months in prison or both. Oh, don't be so daft, Mum. They'll never prosecute. And if they do, they'll take those 33 years into consideration. Nothing will happen. During those 33 years, your dad was landlord. I've only been a licensee a few months. A few months. Ah, oh, good afternoon, Mrs Ogden. Flipping sake, aren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry, love. I thought it was dinner time. It's only quarter to ten. I mean, you're only an hour and a half late. Oh, well, it gives you all the more time to do the spirits, doesn't it? And what do you mean by that? Nothing. Part of your job, isn't it? Bottling up. Insinuating, aren't you? Oh, no. Only if Mrs Walker was to lose her licence, I bet I know who'd apply for it. You and your husband. All ex-bobbies like pubs. Cheeky flip. Listen to me, Mrs Nosey Parker. Anybody that had a motive for getting Mrs Walker into trouble is you, cos she didn't give you a rise. Hey, you want to watch what you say? And you. Ah. Well, I may not have to watch what I say very much longer. I may not be working for the alleged person. I might be doing for gentlemen. Have you got to keep taking those flaming aspirin? <laughs> Heat. I've only taken two. Sound like bricks being dropped down a mine yeah, shaft. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what the flipping feel is like. Whose idea was it to rehearse last night for today? Good morning, Frank. I am not surprised you can't see straight after last night. Don't tell me you were there and all, darling. In the spirit, yes. In the flesh, no. I have come to complain. 
Oh, well, will you put it in writing, love? And will you write it in your house? I couldn't stand the sound of a scratching pen. Look, I didn't mind about you keeping Alan and I awake all night with a noise. No, making a noise and singing at three o'clock in the morning has a certain charm all of its own. And you falling downstairs from time to time had an interest too. Because we didn't know how far you were going to fall down before you got up again. No, it was when you got us arguing amongst ourselves that I got annoyed. Arguing? About three o'clock in the morning, a loud noise. Alan said it was something from the classics. I said you knocked a pan down and all the rest went with it. It were the pans. Oh, good. I've won my bet. Well, will you do me a favour, lads? In future, when you go out at night and get tanked up and you come home, will you let me know? Or otherwise, send me a programme so I can follow what's happening. Elsie, make us some coffee. In this tip, I will not. Oh, it's not that I couldn't find the coffee. I'm sure you grow your own in the back kitchen there. I just couldn't find the sink, that's all. Yeah, that's our problem and all. I'll say one thing for you two. Whatever you were drinking last night, it certainly wasn't watered. It was the pans. Pan? The pans. The pans? What are you, what are you complaining about? No, mate, I feel great. Uh, <laughs> it means what's your grouse? I've got no grouse. Why should I have a grouse? I've got a hard-working little wife, haven't I? One in a million there, Stan. Yeah. Feeds me like a cane, keeps the house clean. It's like a flipping palace arrows, I'll tell you. <laughs> Everything in its proper place, sure. And yet she still feels she could get time to do another one? Yeah, well, it's funny you should mention that. Yeah, I thought oh. it was funny when I said it. Is that why she sent you? Well, n not exactly, no. But you are touting for work for her. Ah, uh, if I was passing, uh, and I am, you know, <laughs> she said I might drop in and sort of drop a gentle in, you know. But she did. Yeah. Tell her we'd be very hello, grateful. Hello, 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 hello. We'd be very grateful if she'd help us out. Yes, but it says oriental fruits and spices, tomatoes, dates, mango chutney, molasses, salt and onions and caramel. I read once that Mohammedans don't drink alcohol. Oh, not bad the... for one at nine, is it? What the heck are you talking about? But you see my point, don't you? Suppose they leave molasses out, what happens? Well, you'd still put it on your fish and chips, wouldn't you? Yes, but then everything wouldn't be the same as the label. Something would be missing, wouldn't it? And I could drag them through the courts, couldn't oh, I? Oh, you could, that. Yes, well, sauce should be made of sauce, gin should be made of gin, and rum should be made of rum. I don't know what you're getting at me for. I don't put the sauce through an optic, you know. No, but if you did, you might be tempted to add gravy, browning and vinegar, like Mrs Walker adds water. Oh, but Ina says that hasn't been proved yet. Send a notice of him, Mrs Caldwell. You know what you are, Mr Tatmark? You're a... Look, there's some sardines you ordered. I don't know how many's in them, how many's girls and how many's boys. We'll just have to take each other on trust, won't we? Perhaps it would be a good thing if we had all been Mohammedans and then we shouldn't drink alcohol and then Mrs Walker wouldn't be in trouble. Landlady of the year. <laughs> We could have settled in Mother York, you know, if we'd been lucky. <laughs> and worn those old sombreros, all late. The football match. Do you know, I still say that it was my speech before the game that spurred them on to victory. I'm sure it was. Drink your tea, Mum. Well, we've certainly given the Gazette plenty to write about over the years. Ooh, that awful viaduct disaster. You can still see that young policeman's face. <gasps> Martha Long. Well, now we're giving them something else to write about. Now we don't know yet. Any, anyway, it wouldn't be the end of the world. Wouldn't it? It'd be the end of mine, Billy. Oh, what's keeping that postman? Any checks? Ah, oh, checks. Just these. One for thou. And one for me. Flipping more calendars. Yeah, well, at least we won't be short of dates next year. Terry and Brown rigs. Mm, not bad. Dean and Featherston, snap. Oh, well, we'll be able to do donate one of them to a worthy cause. Why do plumbers and engineers send out calendars like this? What do underwear firms send out? Diesel engines. Are you complaining? No, 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 I just... Hello, Albert. Hey, I suppose you've sent all your bills out like for year-end. That's right, Albert, yes. Well, that, that's a pity. <clears throat> For you, I mean, because I want my downspout repaired urgent today. You see, every time it rains, it floods yard. Every time? So it's been going on a bit? Well, off and on. But today, having sent out all the bills, it's urgent. We do send bills out every month, you know. Yes, yeah, but I reckon it'll be about this time next year before you get round to the account rendered please remit ones. <laughs> you cheeky beggar. Mr Tatlock. Yeah. Since you are such an esteemed customer of ours, please accept this Ooh. from us. What is it? The calendar. Military uniforms through the ages. Mm. Don't say we never gave you out. No, love, it just says the name of the brewer and the town where it was bottled. Oh, not like sauce. 
Huh? Well, it doesn't give the essential ingredients, uh, like uh, mango chutney. It's milk stout, no? Oh, yes, I know, Mr Howard. Only Mr Taprock <coughs> said that things should have it displayed on them, what's in it, and then we'd know what we was eating and drinking. Oh, it doesn't do to know everything you're eating and drinking these days, love. Mm. She's just in the back. She'll be out in a minute. All right, I'll leave her. Don't worry, Lefty, Mrs Gorwell. <laughs> it's come. What else? The letter. What letter? From the authorities. How the heck do you know? Look, it's official, is that? And I bet I know what's in it and all. You've had your chips, Mrs. I'm Marty Walker. Well, it's just the way you're leaving then, isn't it? Hey, you know, it might be to <coughs> being associated with a thing mm, like that. Yeah. A good job I got that job for you, now. You got me? Yeah. Took all my tact and swayed those two, they needed you. Tact and, and subliffuse, you know. No, I'm just thinking, 24 hours from now, everybody's going to be wishing everybody else the best. In the meantime, they're wishing everybody else the worst, aren't they? Don't get involved. Look, I'm not going to get involved, but I can't help thinking of the bankruptcy time, when they came down from the hills like wolves with their knives sharp to cut me into little pieces. I feel a little bit sorry for Mrs Walker. I'm sorry if I'm to wait, love. It's Mrs Walker. A pint, Alan? Yes, usual, please. And gin and tonic, Elsie? No, just a tonic until we get the news, eh? Yeah. Elsie. A tonic, neat. And thanks for reminding me about the time of your back bankruptcy. One of those long knives was Annie Walker's. Over a round of drinks you owed. Reggie. Yeah. Can you get me a large brandy, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Hey, uh, when did these arrive? Just this minute. How are things back at the garage? Oh, fine. I got the water pump fitted and needed a new pipe. Oh, well, that'll make him happy. Yeah. Great time of year for Bill, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, Betty, Elsie's only got a tonic. Yeah, but she... I don't want it. Put a gin in it. Put On the a... house. you start drinking and I'll start reading. Following the visit of our inspectors to your premises, the analyst's report of the samples purchased by them is now to hand. Oh, go on, Mum. Start something. Just read, Billy. It confirms that the gin offered for sale to the general public does not comply with the Food and Drugs Act 1955, Section 2. It not being of the nature, quality or substance required by the Act, appropriate action will be taken in due course. Thank you, Billy. Where are you going? Where well, I must go, to read this to my customers. Mom, I don't know about the gin, but when it comes to the nature, substance and quality of a landlady, you've got a lot. <laughs> No, it's a calendar. I've just bought it. Oh, well, I tried to get a calendar with pussycats on. Only they haven't got any. Uh, they're any use for Ah, well, this is military uniforms through the ages. Oh, well, that would be very interesting. Ah, that's what the girl said. Mm, well, aren't you going to have a look at it? Well, I don't see why not. I mean, according to the shopper... What the blooming... Oh, Mr Tatter, oh. I don't think that's very respectable. Hey, you're a cheeky one, aren't you? Is that finishing Len Fairclough and Ray Langton? They told me it was soldiers. I trusted them and they said it was soldiers. Oh, you can't please some men, can you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the report from the Public Health Department, which I'm sure you're all eagerly waiting, has now been delivered to me. I'm sure that you'll all be as astonished as I am to learn that the, the quality of the gin did not conform to the Food and Drugs Act. Accordingly, and in due course, I shall be taken to court. Now, those of you who know me well, and you all do, I sincerely trust will appreciate that I am completely innocent. I had the opportunity, of course, but then so did others. I trust I can count on your continued support. Uh, just a minute, Mrs Walker. Elizabeth? Uh, by others? Do you mean me? By others, I meant exactly what I said. Others. Betty, let it go. Let it 
letting go and she just publicly accused me. Oh, she's in a bit of a state. She's just saying the first thing that comes into her head. Anyway, other people did have access. It was Lucille, Miss Nugent, Mrs Ogden, besides my mum and you. And not forgetting me. Uh, another pint, Stan? Uh, no, no, thanks, no. <laughs> uh, it's a wife's new job, you know. I'm just going to see how she's getting on, eh? Pretty obvious, wouldn't you say? No, no. Well, it is, isn't it? She doesn't get a race she's after. Then our elder goes off and gets a new job. Now Stan Hotfoot's off to tell her the news. Ah, uh, it's not only Sexton Blake that can work things out, you know. I don't care what anybody says, I think it's disgusting. What's he been up to now, Mrs. Galwell? Well, it, it's what he might get up to that I'm frightened of here. Have a look at this. Hey, look! By heck, Albert. Hey. Come, Rover. Just what I like this a tablecloth you can read. Do ya? Oh, Stan likes that and all. He says, read all the newspapers you can get, cos it broadens your mind. Oh. He says the tips is very good in that one. <laughs> uh, does the smell of carbolic bother you, Mr Fairclough? Mister? Oh, yeah. While I'm working for you, it's best to be formal. Outside working hours, Len and Ray. But within these walls, Mister. Stan says you should always remember your place. Oh, he reads the times and all, does he, Stan? Of course, that's what kills the germs, you know, carbolic. Kills them stone dead. Oh, never mind your fancy lavender and pine smells. No, carbolic. Antiseptic carbolic. Matter of fact, I brought some of them disinfectant blocks from Annie Walker's gents and put them in your toilet. That'll be cosy. Uh, all right, me popping in, eh? Hey, uh, yes, that's January. What's June like when it's sun shining, eh? <laughs> hey, Stanley, you're not in your own home now. Oh, I'm, so I'm sorry, Chuck. <laughs> uh, she's not the only one hung up, I'll tell you. Annie Walker's going to get summonsed. I knew it. Comes as no surprise to me. It does to me. Why didn't you know from the town hall, then? No, I'm only a flipping councillor. I'm not the town clerk, you know. But I'll tell you something. I'll make sure there's a thorough investigation. Oh, yeah, well, that would only be proper. Hey, so it smells good. <laughs> oh, well, that'll be your good lady's carbolic. That's uh, so our Illa's hot pot. Um, I've got some corned beef for you, Stan, and pickles. <laughs> uh, that is, unless, um, well, there is plenty of hot pot left in the dish. Pull up a chair. Ta. <laughs> hey, I do love these friendly little get-togethers. Oh, stop sulking. I was only joking. I'm not sulking. Well, it's very nice, your house is. Because it's very nice. It's mine, isn't it? It's me. Well, very true. And mine's me. Only houses can be very lonely. And I think my house must be very lonely missing me because I'm missing my house. Well, it's not a living thing. Oh, yes, it is, and you know it is. Houses can be hurt. They're very happy when things are going all right, and they get very upset when things are going wrong. Oh, you're talking daft. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Well, would you like to go and live in one of those modern old-age pensioners' bungalows? No, I wouldn't. Well, why not? Because I wouldn't. Well, you might if you could take your house with you. Oh, you're getting dafter every minute. Well, Bobby's not daft, and he thinks the same as I do. Cats have instinct. Now, what does he do when I let him out to do his little duty? He runs straight back to his own doorstep. Yeah, well, that's just habit. Oh, not at all. Well, perhaps a little is. Like, uh, he doesn't like sitting in your cold scullery when he's used to being in the warmth with me in my house. Oh, go on, then. Oh, all right. Come on, Bobby. It's all oh, right. Like yeah, come no on, mean the cats, I and don't and know. Oh, right. Uh, when do you want me again, then? Uh, Raymond, when do we want Hilda again? Well, uh, not tomorrow, love. It's not worth it. The place is going to be wrecked. Oh, uh, Jan 1. That's a public holiday. With pay? <laughs> I don't think you're quite qualified for our unique pension and holiday scheme. I'm not having worked for just uh, three hours. Oh, <laughs> Jan 2, eh? Well, look, I'll tell you what, love. We'll let you know. Oh, yeah, all right, then. Uh, I'll uh, probably be seeing you. Yeah, and when you do, love, don't forget, it's Len and Ray. You won't be working, then. Oh, no. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. Well, well, the hot pot wasn't bad, and the place looks clean. Well, it smells clean, but... Uh... Yeah, you would probably try and work Stanley in as a butler. And everything we say will be taken down and used in evidence. <laughs> you know what I reckon, Len? Well... I reckon since we've decided to have a housekeeper and spend good money on her, 
I don't see why we shouldn't take our pick out of the many millions who will answer a sixpenny advert in a corner shop window. Yeah, just leave it to me. Who knows, we might get January, February, June or July. <laughs> oh, they needed looking after them too. Place were like a pigsty. Not fit for gentlemen to live in. Gentlemen? That's not how I'd describe them. Oh, well, anybody who pays your wage is a gentleman. I see. So when you was working for Mrs Walker, was she a lady? Most of the time. But she's not now, like, because of all this bother. Ah, well, that's for the court to find out. You know, ma'am, there's some people round here, and you know what they're saying? That you're not a lady. And they're also saying that you might know something about that gin, so I'd be careful who I went slanging if I was you. Oh, sad. Never mind. Oh, sad. Albert Tatlock. Him? Albert Tatlock said that Elsie Tanner... That trollop I might have known. I'll see her at opening time. Oh, take it easy, ma'am. I'll take her easy. <laughs> Oh, why didn't you say you wanted a message running Raymond? I'd have been only too pleased. <laughs> Don't think you would somehow, love. Advertisement for you. It was touch and go whether I shoved it on the telly at peak viewing time or gave it to the sweetest little girl I know for a tanner. A shilling. Oh, it's gone up. Yes, you see, I'm twice as sweet now. Oh. Shilling. Shilling. Thank you. Attractive young lady required as day housekeeper for two respectable business gents. <laughs> Hey, I don't think my mum would like this. Ah, well, you see, she would if she understood, love, because in a way we are flattering her. Your mother, Mrs Ogden, is a neighbour. More than a neighbour, a friend. And for us to see a neighbour and a friend down on her knees, scrubbing the floors for us, working her fingers to the bone, sweating over a hot iron for us, <laughs> well, it was too much. I don't believe you. Well. Anyway, come here, Tricky. What's that attractive young bit? Ah, well, you see, that's to stop being a sharp as applying. Bill has asked me to remind everybody that there's an extension tomorrow night till about half past twelve. There should be an extension every night. Oh, do us a favour. I've got a bed to go to. Well, you can work in shifts, can't you? It's ridiculous, isn't it? You can put anything you like on a public stage. You can buy whatever you like in a bookshop. The permissive society is going mad all around us. And a perfectly ordinary, decent middle-aged man like me, and I can't get a pint after half past ten at night. His eyes are the old, <laughs> so. Right, Mrs. Turpin. For a kick-off, you can go and tell your boss that I've quit. I've got a better job. With pleasure. And you, Mrs. Flaming Tanner, or Mrs. Flaming Howard, or whatever you call yourself, you can tell me to my face. You name it, I'll tell it. That I fiddled the gin. Right, you fiddled the gin, and I can't say I'm surprised. Come on. I never touched a rotten gin, but I know who found the town hall. You uh, what, did you say, Elder Ogden? Good no, evening, come on. Come on. Come on. Mrs. Walker said, will you wait a minute? If she wants me, I'll be at the top drum. I wouldn't spend money in here on illicit water. I must have been a very wicked woman. Oh, I don't say things like that. Of course you're not. Oh, yes, I must. I'm being paid back. For what? I don't know, but I'm being paid back. I never thought that Hilda would leave me, not at a time like this. Oh, come on. You know Hilda. She'll be back. It must be somebody under this roof, Billy. And yet they're the very ones to whom I've given comfort, shelter or wages. Could have been me. Oh, I'm not as wicked as that. To doubt my own son. Oh, I wish it had been me. Why? How would that have helped me? Look, Mum, stop polishing things that don't need polishing and come into the bar. It's nearly eight. They'll be filling up. Now, come on, keep yourself busy. Keep your mind off things. You know, you've got more friends out there than you realise. Do I look all right? You always look all right. Come on. Thank you very much. Okay. Good night. Good night, love. 